everything that Ron said. I think that Asians tend to not ask. I mean, for instance, um, well, just to give you a personal example, last year, uh, both I had a colleague in my department who was also Asian American. We were both at the same level. We both wanted to be promoted. Um, we're both, you know, great attorneys. So I think we both do good work. But I told my boss over and over again that I deserved to be promoted. And he, and he agreed, but you know, it's not just up to him. But I, because I kept going to him, he knew that I was persistent. He wasn't, he, I wasn't gonna let it go. She never went to her boss. I think she was, I don't know, timid or didn't want to rock the boat or felt like she couldn't do that because of the relationship. And so as a result, I got promoted. Um, she did end up getting promoted like a while later, but there actually was a promotion freeze for a while, so that kind of made her even more bitter. But um, you, you know, you, you just you have to if you want something, you have to go for it. You have to ask for it. No one, chances are, no one's going to come to you and just reward you just because. And I think that was the biggest mistake I had when I first started my legal career. When I was at a law firm um, and I was an associate, I really did think if I just work hard, um, don't cause any trouble, you know, people will recognize that. And that is completely not true because all of your other peers, your colleagues, are out there touting themselves, getting themselves known. Um, and, and I completely agree with what Ron said about um, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. We, we need to move past that and realize that that's, that type of mentality is not going to work in American corporate culture. Frank, can I get you yeah. um, to tell us what we need to do to step yeah. up and to get hurt? Yeah, it's really interesting hearing both of you talk about the cultural, you know, this idea the idea uh, the, I've heard it's, it's the, uh, the loud duck that gets shot, you know, the quacking <laughs> duck that gets shot. And, and what really is, this is the setup because I'm rewarded for being humbled. So for you to be humbled, um, if I show emotion and if I get maybe teary-eyed, then gee, Frank's got heart. If you do it, you're an emotional woman. And if I ask for it, yep, you know, Frank is really, um, he's, ag he's aggressive, he really wants to do well. And if you all ask for it, you're being pushy. So to me, it's, um, you gotta be smarter than this culture. You gotta understand, first of all, and you understand it, that, that, that the biases are there. We don't even understand we're doing it. And by me, I'm talking about those who are in my life form. We have no idea what we're doing because I am comfortable being around white men uh, unconsciously, the, the rules are white men, uh, and I've done this all my life, and I only realized this recently, that white men get the benefit of the doubt, so they can do the job until they prove to me they can't. Everyone else cannot do the job until you prove to me you can. So that's that unconscious. So what, what, what has to happen? Um, you've got to understand those unspoken rules of whatever culture you're in. So in our company, we're a family company. So we're dysfunctional happy. So we know everybody, we're great, but we have this Georgia power nice and we cannot be honest with anybody. We cannot manage conflict. So there's these unspoken rules about how you engage a manager or a supervisor in public or not. Uh, I think there's got to be, you got to decide what aspect of your culture is either helping you or taking it away. And I don't think there's any one size fits all. And I think you're going to have to figure that out with a lot of honest feedback with your immediate supervisor and your mentors. So do you have a supervisor and everybody in corporate America, I'm saying everybody, this is a general statement because I don't think we do a very good job with honest, direct job and career feedback. I think on whole corporate America doesn't. So you're going to have to work triply hard to get someone to be honest with you. What is happening? How are you impacting others that you need to make a choice? Do I want to make choices and modify what I'm doing? Because it is not, it's not work performance. It's work performance and relationships. You've got to build relationships in those areas of your career where you want to go because ultimately Folks are put into positions because somebody is comfortable with you. And the way you develop comfort is through relationships. 
And let's be honest, we're still a segregated, we're separated in our society. We're more segregated today than we were prior to the civil rights. And as a result of that, all these biases that we had that come into the work environment are just reinforced. So intolerance begets more intolerance. So you're going to have to develop relationships, the mentoring, really mentor and be mentored by a lot of white folks. Don't just mentor with who you are comfortable with. Uh, for women, the Catalyst shows that 83% of women executives had white men who were their mentors. So you have to figure out, and, and, and but the, that honest feedback and the unspoken rules, and 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 then you just kind of and and I tell you, I'm, I'm this is humbling. I probably have assimilated to something without realizing I've given something up. But you're going to have to figure out how much do you assimilate in this culture, this relationship, to get someone comfortable with you, without you losing your identity. And I don't know. I I, I have no answers for that. Can I comment? Yeah. Yeah, I think you hit upon something, which is um, to not focus on the differences you have with other people, but to focus on the similarities. Um, that's one thing that I've learned. I mean, obviously, when I walk into a room, I do look different than most of the people who are in there. But then I think I kind of take it upon myself to try to find the things I have in common with the people who are in the room who may not look like me. I mean, whether it's, I, well, I personally don't play golf, but a lot of you know people do. And uh, I run, so you know, if I find someone who's a runner, we, I just focus on things that are similar. If it's that family is important to them, if it's that they like to shop or like to travel or like wine or eating out, find something you have in common and build on that. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, we are all people, we're all human beings, we all, you know, work in corporate America, so surely we have something that we can discuss. Uh, I'll just add to a couple points that Frank mentioned, which, which are relevant in my career. Um, I had white mentors my whole career, right? But by default, um, most of the management at UPS during that period of time were also Caucasian males. Um, what I also had to do, which was also unconsciously not thinking about it, and since Frank had stated it, is I had to prove that I was better than my peers. I had to prove that I was more prepared than my peers. Uh, than my peers. Uh, it's, it's, it's a constant state of making sure that you are able and you demonstrate that you're able to do that job. Right? And, and oftentimes, I will go ahead and take on those responsibilities to prove that I could do the job before the promotion ever came. So it's, it's a lot of planning, a lot of preparation, but you know, we represent a very small percentage of the U.S. population. And therefore, you know, what is it that, that will attract the limelight to, to the Asian population over the peers? And, and that's the, 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 the age-old question that we have to ask ourselves as we try to move up the corporate ranks of America. basically worked a little better for women and for African American, um, you didn't say specifically definitely men, but African Americans in general, um, for attaining those leadership positions, what, in your opinion, why are not the Asian Pacific Islanders and even the Latinos not achieving those same levels? And maybe you have to be a little redundant with what you said earlier, but... <laughs> Um, and also, could you yeah. add on about how is that specific to the southeast, or do you see something nationally? Is it different to other parts of the country? Um, it's interesting that what um, eighty plus percent of Chinese Asian Americans are, are pretty much located in fifteen states in our country. Over fifty percent of Chinese Asian Americans are born in either New York or California and live in either New York or California. So from a tipping point, a critical mass, it's only really been in the last 15 years that in our community we realize, my goodness, there is something happening in our community that we didn't know what it was before. 